cops messing with Troy McCanty's head. They raided his mum's house. We don't know exactly why, but Yvonne McCanty is 85 years old, so I think it's safe to say it's more likely connected to her infamous son than her. At any rate, they didn't seem to find much of interest, which is not surprising. Troy McCanty is one of Australia's most enduring outlaw crime targets, and you don't get to that stage by hiding stuff at your mum's. I love you. I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Gang crime did seize a plaque commemorating McCanty's lifetime membership of the Mongols. Where was he keeping that? Where everyone who becomes a lifetime member of an outlaw motorcycle gang keeps their commemorative plaques. This is going straight to the pool room. No. Serious. It was in the pool room at his mum's house. Now it's in an evidence box somewhere at Police HQ, along with his gang colours. They were seized also. I don't quite know what the cops are out to prove with that stuff. He hasn't exactly been hiding the fact he's a member of the Mongols. So what game are the cops playing? I reckon the game's called Let's Give Troy McCanty the Shits Until He Snaps and Punches a Cop, because then it's game over for him. You touch a cop when you're a bikey with as much form as Troy, and you're going inside for a long time. I hereby order you to serve two life sentences back to back. Wednesday morning's raid came a few weeks after police searched McCanty's own house under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Didn't find anything, but again, that wasn't really the point. The point was to... Give McCanty the shits. Right, and they sure did. Out of my way! I got a doozy of a toozy! Cops can conduct a raid one of two ways. They can methodically go through your stuff and leave it neat and tidy, or they can do this. Now, which option do you think they took when they raided Troy's You house? know what I think. You think what most people think. F*** me signed up for this life. Cops aren't making a secret of the fact that they're using these laws to niggle bikies, to use the dispersal notices, insignia laws, anti-consorting orders, firearms prohibition orders, unexplained wealth. What am I missing? I think you've got them all. Use all that plus whatever we've forgotten to make life as a gang member so intolerable they eventually say... I'm too old for this shit. So maybe this policing method will actually work. I've tried everything else. The upshot of 20 years of bikey crackdowns has been more bikies and more bikey pedal drugs than ever before. But as McCanty's lawyer Paul Holmes has been known to quietly remark, in the past couple of years we've changed our justice system so that instead of discouraging police harassment, We've institutionalised Yeah, well, bikies are pretty good at getting around the law. That's true. The guys busted flashing their tats by the pool at Rendezvous Scarborough have been weaving their way through the Criminal Law Unlawful Consorting and Prohibited Insignia Act. The case against WA's Inc. Martyrs, Wayne Pettigrove, Tyson Robinson, Jesse Coatman and Jamie Ginn, the latter of which has defected from the rebels to a new gang called Johnson & Johnson, has just wrapped up. Lawyer Catherine Krauss closed the defence by arguing that a lot of the police body camera evidence that purports to show the tats is actually inadmissible. Catherine says most of the images were captured after the summons was issued. The offence logically had to be committed before the summons, so only images taken before the cops told the bikers they were being naughty is relevant. Genius. Just like something out of my cousin Vinny. Well, it might just work, because there aren't many clear images of Band-Aid Boy and his mates displaying their gang tats in the lead-up to the cops handing over the paperwork. And the lawyers have a plan B in case that defence doesn't fly with the judge. Don't be smart with me. They're claiming the pool area at the rendezvous doesn't meet the definition of a public place because people had to be paying guests to be there. Ten bucks. Look, can I... Oop. I just... Oop. Stewie. Oop. Look. Oop. Magistrate Michelle Harries has reserved her decision, so it'll be quite a while before we find out if they have to pay some very big fines. If I was in your situation, I'd want to get through this whole thing as quickly and with as little pain as possible. Shame we can't find politicians for broken promises. Anthony Albanese's under fire over his own well-heeled retirement at the moment. People are saying it's a bit rich, he's calling people too rich, when they aren't as rich as he's going to be when he leaves the lodge to enjoy his golden years. The right-wing Institute of Public Affairs reckons Albo will enjoy a lifetime pension of more than $400,000 a year. Nice. The PM reckons that figure is off the mark. Well, the Australian report is wrong. If it's wrong. It's wrong. Well, it's not right. It's wrong. And our working-class hero got quite shirty when pressed about what the right number was. Uh, well, so hang on. You've, you've had your question. Pension. You've had your question. It's a relevant line of questioning, though, because for you and me to enjoy a retirement income of 400 grand, 
if that's what it is, we would need at least $8 million in superannuation. That's assuming a conservative 5% rate of return. That's 5 mil above the 3 mil that's been identified as fat cat territory. Even then, our pension's not guaranteed, like Albo's, because, like all police who came to office before 2005, he's in a defined benefit scheme. Doesn't matter if the markets are up or down, he still gets the same amount. <laughs> you don't, Jim. It doesn't matter anymore. Chalmers was also copping some heat because of his persistent use of one particular word when explaining what other tax breaks might be scrapped. I mean, our intention is statement of intent, announcing our intentions, not intentionally. Well, it's not my intention. We're suspicious about that word because the PM used it to hose down speculation about the $3 million cap. We have no intention of making any major changes on superannuation. And look how that unfolded. Is anyone telling the truth at the moment? Well, when the politicians aren't lying to you about your super fund, your super fund is lying to you about your super fund. <laughs> Mercer Superannuation Australia has just been busted greenwashing one of its investment funds. The company's Sustainable Plus product was popular with idealistic investors because it purported to shun fossil fuels, <laughs> alcohol, <laughs> and gambling. Give me $100,000 in chips. Let me have a diet Pepsi and some hot wings. An audit by ASIC found the no carbon, no booze, no betting fund held stakes in BHP, AGL Energy, Budweiser, Treasury Wine Estates, Crown and Tabcorp. Tell him he's dreaming. I'm Ben Hart. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.